hearts. Let your words come alive. Let this find expression in us. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders that shall accompany the word preached. We return all the glory unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you please be seated in God's presence? Tonight we're talking about Christianity. It's relevance beyond religion. Christianity, it's relevance beyond religion. The biggest cage that the devil has caged Christianity is a cage called religion. It's calling Christianity religion. Christianity a mere religion. There is true and pure religion and undefiled, which is to visit the fatherless and the widows. And... But beyond us being charitable and loving and caring, there is a place that Christianity is supposed to occupy. Light is only relevant as far as it is light. And the church or Christianity is only relevant as far as it is functional. Wisdom. 
So there are three things that are key for us to operate in the supernatural. It is wisdom, it is power, and it is love. Why are they three? When we talk about supernatural, it means that something that is super, let's take it super and natural. Something that is above with something that is the natural in combination, in conjunction. Now, I said there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And on earth, there are three that bear record. The next verse. They are. They are what? Yes. The Spirit, the what? The water, and what? And the blood. And these three, they do what? They agree in one. Now, why do we have three? The mystery behind the supernatural is encoded, or the mystery behind the supernatural workings and power of God is encoded in unity of the Trinity. I'm coming somewhere. The mystery of the supernatural power and working of God is encoded in the unity of the Trinity. Who are the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And now when God decided to make man, God decided to make man three as himself for a purpose, for a reason. It is because for there to be a cooperation between man and God, man has to have the structure of God. So there is a structure for relevance. And the structure for relevance is always three-dimensional. The structure for a relevant Christian, or if the church will be relevant, there are three dimensions that we must operate from. And the three dimensions are the sound mind, the power, and love. So God didn't give us the spirit of fear, rather he gave us three dimensions to remain relevant. Let's take it bit by bit. Now, God is three, he made man three. So, you as a man, I as a man, I'm three in one. The soul, which relates with the Father, the body, which relates with the Son, the spirit, which relates with the Holy Ghost. The number six is relevant in man. When God created man, God created man on the sixth day. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, in verse 18, it said, if we will number the number of the beast, the Antichrist, it is the number of a man, for it is three score, six hundred and six, which means six, six, and six. And if we come to John chapter 2, when we saw that they made six water pots after the purifying manner of men. So it goes to tell me that if we must operate in the supernatural to be relevant as a church or as Christians beyond religion, we must understand this three dimensions of God. So God created man in his image and in his likeness. And he created the man to be like him so that he can live in the man.
So if we count the numbers, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, man the soul, man the body, and man the spirit, they will make six of them. So the battle for relevance has been a battle from creation. The Bible says in the book of James that as the spirit, as the body without the spirit is dead, James 2 verse 26, so also faith without works is dead. So without the spirit, the body is dead. So even if any man is still living without God in him, the man is dead. So all what the devil is striving for from the ongo is to look for a way to separate the supernatural from the natural. Now, what makes the church relevant is not its ability to enclose itself away from the world. What gives Christianity relevance is its ability to be in the world, influence the world, change things in the world, and remain unspotted in the world. And that's why Jesus Christ prayed. And he said, I pray not that you take them away from the world, but that you will keep them there and that you will preserve them. So when God, from the beginning, cast the devil down to the earth, in all his wisdom, he wanted to maintain his superiority, his power, his relevance on earth, created a being that was lifeless, breathed upon the being, that means put himself into that being, I 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God always does his things in wisdom. Now that's why where wisdom that came. In wisdom that seems weak and foolish, but it is most powerful. And the Bible says, this is the wisdom that the priests of the world did not know. If they had known, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. So he cast down the devil to the earth. He came back, decided to recreate everything in the earth. I said, Satan, don't worry. I will show you that I will still govern you even in my absence. I will create a special being that has my structure and my likeness. Nigeria, 
Why do we need to even have Diva Life Bible Church in Ukraine? We already have Diva Life in Hako that is big enough, one in Tenopil, one in Zaporozhye, and in different other places. Why do we need to expand? It's because Jesus came back with the mandate of multiplication that we should go forth and spread forth go forth and spring forth so that in every place that we are we will establish that kingdom of God and what is the kingdom of God the kingdom of God simply means the sovereignty of God so that in every city in every region in every village there is one person that can stand and be the light in that place. How do we get this light? How can we get this light? Because if we must tell ourselves the truth, the way God created and instituted the church to be is not the way the church is today. The church is fast losing relevance in the sense that we don't have people anymore that can stand and dictate the goings most times in the society. When you say something is the light, light leads the way. Light dictates what should happen. Light sets the pace. Light brings order. Light brings clarity. But today, denominations are multiplying, but influence is decreasing. Churches are sprouting up everywhere, but relevance is reducing. And it means that something has missed. It means that something has gone wrong. And that's where the Holy Ghost wants to open our eyes to a few things tonight. For us to see what many churches out there or some of us are actually getting wrong that is making us lose relevance in the society. We had men like Elijah in the days of old that would be bold to be the king and tell him there would be no rain except I speak. We had men like one of the one of the pastors then in Nigeria that will go and tell a military president, you said they should not preach the gospel again. I will invite the Hadbonke and host crusade in this community. And you will say nothing about it. And the president will come and sneak in and attend the crusade. But today we have Christians. That once it gets rainy, once it begins to rain, once the weather changes, they will wrap themselves in their blanket and tell you the weather was not comfortable. There was a lot of snow. That's why I could not come out for evangelism. We had people that could stand and we stand. in our blanket when we have modules on Monday and we don't attend Sunday service. As Christians, we are fast losing this light. So, even if we will pray tonight that the Lord will open our eyes to the places where we got it wrong, I want to put it this way, that the biggest problem has not been power. You know, thank you, Holy Ghost. Revival is not an act. Revival is a system. So when we come to gatherings like this, and everybody here, there is revival. There will be revival tonight. Everybody will be waiting for the shoutings and the crowd.
signs and the speaking in tongues. But we speak much in tongues without understanding scriptures. We have many laying of hands and rolling on the floor without evident changes in life. There are many revelations with a very few manifestations. It's because what we call revival in modern days is almost something that doesn't exist. You go to so many places and you see what they, what they call it. What is this word? Euphoria or what? The, the, the joyous shouting and, and, and ringing of the air. In the book of Samuel, where, uh, is it book of Samuel or the book of Kings? When the, the ark of God, when they were to go to battle and they brought the ark and the people were happy that the ark has come and they were shouting and jubilating and the Bible said the earth rang. Somebody said it was God that called them, but they didn't pick the call. The earth rang and they were happy. The ark has come back. The ark is back. And they went for the battle. They slew them all. But the ark was what God told them to bring forth to the battle and then they will win the battle. But on this time, they brought the ark and they were still slain. So it tells me that God likes a structure, and the structure is three, wisdom, power, and love. But the structures without the spirit is calamity in waiting. So when they brought the ark, and the earth rang, and the new people God's call, and they still slew them. What happened? How did they separate the spirit from the earth? So it went on to tell me that it is the spirit that does the work. But the spirit needs a structure to work with. So even if we have all our structure, and today what we have is structures upon structures upon structures, and meetings upon meetings upon meetings, uh, the, 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 one of the greatest revivalists that we that we have in that, that we've ever had in, in Nigeria, from the western part of Nigeria, they were they wanted to start a, they wanted to start a revival in Nigeria then, and according to what we read, and then they went into closed door meetings, all the dickies and all the heads, to have a meeting for revival, foolishness, to have a meeting how to construct revival, and this one. That was really a true man of God that was praying, was just outside. Then they were carrying a dead man outside. And that was where a great ministry sprang out from. You don't need meetings upon meetings to conduct a revival. You only need the structure and the Holy Ghost. So, how do we remain relevant? Or how do we attain relevant? Now, I want to say this, and I hope I don't skip so many things. The biggest problem, now, wisdom, power, and love, I won't be able to deal with that again, but those are just the three. They are, they are deep, but I will stop there. The center of it is power. A king without power is meaningless. A kingdom without power is meaningless. And he said, I love the Lord, I fear the Lord. It is this, the spirit of the love of God. The structures and the portals upon which revival stands. There are three structures. There must be three. The three must be complete. Because there are three that will bear record in heaven. And the three bear record in heaven must bear record with three on earth. That was how man was created. The giant God and the shepherd God man. Man from the 
himself. The only source of sustenance and the only way the man can be relevant is tied to his connection with God. Somebody, have you broken fellowship today? And that's the reason why you are dry. You now understand the reason why you can't sustain revival. We will, we will if we say now, everybody, let's pray, let's pray, let's shout. And if you want to collect the Holy Ghost, come forward. We do it many times. And we lay hands on people. And you see, yes, the fall that not the anointing and power and everything. But the next day, they are still the normal, same humans that they have been. Nigeria. And you ask 
you are all right. You are losing relevance. Anytime we bow down in sin, we lose relevance. And hell is enlarging his steps. And hell is enlarging his gates. Can everybody rise? Can we rise? Can we rise? Can we rise, please? Can we rise? Can you hold the person next to you? Can we rise and hold the person next to you? Can you rise and hold the person next to you? And hold the person next to you. We are a church. We should be united in righteousness. United in holiness. United in love. United in purity. United in power. The pastors that have preached, first of all, preached on the church and preached on unity.